Give me another one. Music is such an intangible object that it's like the, the, the only thing we can literally touch is something like this that's like physical, you know? When you fall in love with music, you fall in love with all the things around it. With older instruments, it sort of connects the dots between all these things that are connected usually to really good memories. It just makes you feel good, man. It's a cool thing. It's just like a 57 Chevy is, you know? What do we got? For a case junkie, that's very spot on. Do do do. All right. Oh, is there one more right there? Yeah. All right. <laughs> the Mickey Mouse ears. Goodness sakes. Man, how does he get the, the checking? So that's crazy. A little dimple. Yes. All right, now this is some, this is some super geeky stuff right here. Even that's right. It's supposed to be real small on the inside like that. That's stuff you don't talk to, talk to your girlfriend or wife about. Cause she'll be like, please. <laughs> it's pretty dope. <laughs> I grew up in uh, Chicago on the north side on the corner of Armitage and Halstead. And uh, the original Chicago Music Exchange um, used to be this tiny store, like just to the back where the counter was and out the front door. And it was on Clark Street. And so I would catch the bus with my cousin and going in there as, you know, like a six, seven year old kid, you know, and uh, the first. Uh, Gibson that I remember was in there, and it was a, uh, it was actually an SG. I got my eye on that SG. It caught me the second I walked in here. Dope! I started playing in bars and stuff when I was nine and 10 years old even, and it was just crazy having a child now myself. And I could never afford Gibsons. Uh, and I just always wanted one, and I always wanted a Les Paul, you know? So I moved to Nashville right before I turned 21, and it was real rough goings for, for a bit. But then things started moving for me. In essence, I got a really good gig going over to Norway to play in this house band with a bunch of other session guys. And we got paid really, really well. And I came back and I just, you know, that money was burning, you know? And I was like, I'm gonna get myself a, a Les Paul. And so I went around Nashville looking for the one and I found it and I bought it and that was, I was 21. And that guitar now resides with like a fan of mine actually down in Georgia. I get to see that guitar from time to time. I beat the living piss out of it, man. It's, it's all beat up, you know? <laughs> Earl Hooker, who, he played a guitar just like this. Um, but Earl was a funny guy. He was this guy in Chicago in the 50s and 60s. Uh, he actually died of tuberculosis. That's some OG stuff right there. And um, he played slide just like that in standard tuning. And um, he played pretty much primarily Gibsons. And my favorite record that he ever made, uh, he was on tour with his cousin, John Lee Hooker, uh, in the spring of 69 and they went into a recording studio in Hollywood and they cut, in one day, they cut a record for John Lee called If You Miss Him, I Got Him, and they cut an Earl Hooker record. Like, they just did one batch of songs in the morning, one in the afternoon, and there's all these photos of him in LA with his Pelham Blue SG. And it's like, where did you get, like, who were you playing poker with that you were getting all these cool guitars, you know? You got the green just right. The Earl Hooker fan in me is, is digging on it. I 
I like this a lot, man. I like the neck on it. Yeah, the 55 has got this sort of like, uh, I don't know, it's got hot sauce on it or something. It's like the Sri Racha of ES's. Another big influence from when I was a kid, I used to watch the, uh, the Jackson 5 cartoons, you know? And so again, with the ES5s, like there's a big part of me that's always like, you know, I like Plinky. This thing's got it in spades, man. The pieces of wood on the older ESs in particular would have these, these patterns in them because they were just, you know, it was just wood for guitars, you know? Nowadays, some people might out there might not like want all that, you know, in an ES guitar or something like that. And it's like, but that's what they, you know, that's what real ones look like. Like, that's like your fingerprint of like, that's your guitar. <laughs> There's something very approachable about these instruments because they, they're they a tried and tested, you know, recipe. And um, they came around at the kind of birth of modern culture in a lot of ways. When you have music, art, film, everything kind of just kind of went kaboom, you know, like not many other times in human existence. And this is right there with it. That's why it matters to me, you know, because it's like, if you're going to do, if you're going to say, okay, this is going to be a historic replication of something that is really, really important, you know, if you're going to do it, do it. <laughs> That's what's so cool to me about all of the little details, like this corner in particular, that just looks so right. <laughs> it's just like Tom is, Tom is a mad scientist, man. It's like, how do you do that? <laughs> How do you do that, man? <laughs>